when we um, think about this scripture, mm -hmm. and I think about rejecting knowledge, this is what comes to mind to oh, me. Okay. Okay. So we have God's word here. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. How? Because because uh, you know people want to ask, how do we reject knowledge from God? Well, we okay. have God's word, which and is we the have, Bible, which right. is the Bible. Okay. And mm -hmm. we have an apple. Mm -hmm. Rejecting God's word is just as simple as this. You have two things on the table. Mm -hmm. You have a problem. You're mm -hmm. sick. Mm -hmm. You pick up the apple. Yeah. Instead of God's word. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay, and that's what this scripture is really about. Mm -hmm. God is saying that you have rejected, rejected him, exactly. rejected him exactly. in his knowledge. Exactly, exactly. And he, he, he's one, like I said, has the, has the knowledge. But we have choice, okay? And you can choose the apple. I mean, you know, what we, what we learned when we were growing up, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It could. Mm -hmm. but, but the one who created you and the doctor has the information that you really need. Right. And God doesn't go against you know, um, the knowledge of nutrition. No. no, he does not. What we're saying mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. it comes second mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to eat an apple a day as yes. long as that's not your savior. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, we, t we take for an example King Asa in the Bible, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. we know died because of what? Didn't they? The, the knowledge from God. Right. They didn't ask God first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask God first. He asked the physician first. Mm -hmm. And he died because of it. Mm -hmm. So that's not to say good nutrition isn't important. No, that's not. But it comes second to God's word. Exactly. So how do we learn God's word? Study. You have to study. Um, and, God, and then also as we're reading God's word, study it. Uh, take the time and look at each word. Um, there's Bible dictionaries, there's uh, concordances, and, and look at each word and find out what it really meant, um, even at that time, and see w w how it applies to what, what, what you're looking at, um, getting the knowledge that you need from God. But a lot of us don't study. We want to read it. But we don't, we, we don't want to study. You bring up a good point. A lot of us don't know how to study the Bible. I admit it can be intimidating. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, it wasn't until I learned how to study the Bible from Be in Health, mm -hmm. which is a ministry in Georgia, and we pretty much use a King James King Version right. mm -hmm. because that's closest to the Masoretic text mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a concordance to get to the original exactly. Greek and the Hebrew exactly. of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has really transformed my See. Bible study mm -hmm. uh, tremendously. Exactly. Because once you know the original tent, mm -hmm. you know, of yes. God's heart, mm -hmm. uh, it just opens your eyes to so much more. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's so important, and um, I appreciate um, the fact that we learned it also at Being Health. I've been to Being Health um, mm -hmm. down in Georgia, but um, in reading uh, Pastor Henry's book, A More Excellent Way, that has brought so much enlightenment to me by um, um, understanding more about reading, getting the knowledge from God, like you're saying, because you don't want rejected, and then who wants to be sick? You know, we don't really want to be sick. And so studying God's word and seeing what God has to say about us and, and that Jesus came and died for our sins. We just got finished celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but his suffering that he went through, the, the, the shedding of his blood for our sins, all of that is through studying God's word. Right, and so we need to understand how to appropriate God's word mm -hmm. uh, in order to get the healing and the health that, exactly. that we need. Exactly, exactly. And it's there. It's all, it's all there. It's all there. In the scriptures, there's various scriptures that uh, talk about God's, you know, God wanting us to be healed, whole. It's all in, it's all in his word. It okay. just, just takes some time to study it. All right. Well, we'll be right back. Okay. You see all these circles on the banana? Mm -hmm. I've come to call these faith spots. Mm -hmm. Everybody say faith spots. Faith, faith spots. spots. 
faith spots in our natural eye they look like spots spots are what like blemishes mm -hmm. things that make you less attractive yes. um, things actually like I don't know like poverty or even a person's race in the world can make them seem less attractive um, so these I've come to term as faith spots but not just spots I add a tax along the word faith right why did I do that um, if we go to letter C, let's read James 2 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs to the kingdom of which he hath promised to them that love him? Okay, so the very spots that we sometimes despise about ourselves and others are the very spots that God says gives us great faith okay um, without we all know without faith it's impossible to please God right so faith spots um, just want you to just take some time to consider that um, can anybody else share anything else that might be a faith spot we said poverty a person's race may be a faith spot what else just life and finances. Fin yeah, finances. Okay, I have a few on the board Our here. Attitude. attitude. Well, yeah, actually, sin could be a faith spot. Yeah. If we have sin, we don't, we, all of us, none of us have arrived. <laughs> that can be a faith spot. Um, our gender. Okay, can be a faith spot in some situations. Okay, it can make us less attractive in certain situations to the world, never to God, to the world. Um, sicknesses, right, those are faith spots. These are all things that we might think uh, makes us feel unlovely, but God sees them as faith builders, you know. Um, marital status, okay, unemployment. Um, being an orphan, uh, being reared in a single parent home, okay, your weight, okay, our education levels, okay, these are all faith spots. Um, none of these things are going to send you to hell, <laughs> okay, it's just things that, um, like I said, make us look unattractive as far as the world is concerned. God commands us, remember what I said, God loves us no matter our faith spots, right? God commands that we love ourselves no matter what? No matter our what? Faith spots. Faith spots, right. And he also commands us to love other people no matter their what? Their faith spots. All right, so let's talk about uh, what could possibly be blocking our love because I know there was a time when I didn't love myself there was a block okay God was pouring but there was a block I wasn't receiving okay two big blocks um, to receiving God's love and for loving ourselves are spirits of rejection and accusation okay what is accusation? Anybody know what accusation is? What is it? Accusing. Yeah, accusing. Right. So I have these two bananas here. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about the spotty one. Okay. <laughs> what accusation does is say, I don't know, um, you're not making enough money. You're too sick. Okay. Um, you're too poor. You need more education okay that's what accusation does it's a block it's using the faith spots okay against you okay and that could come from another person but what we're specifically discussing today is it could come from your, your own mind in, okay it could come into your own mind we'll talk about whether or not it's your own mind but that's accusation okay um, I need a volunteer to come up Can I have a volunteer Okay. <laughs> okay, and I just want you to um, pick a banana. <laughs> uh, she gonna pick the spotty one now. <laughs> okay, so 
she just picked this banana. How do you think the banana, remember these are also believers. How do you think this banana feels? Rejected. Oh. Rejected because Miss mm -hmm. Kearney did not pick pick them and they picked the one and they picked the one with the spots on the tree. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Anybody else? How, how, how does this banana feel? Lonely. Self-worth. Left out. Self-worth. Mm -hmm. Self -worth. <laughs> There's something wrong with it. Yeah. Right? Because it wasn't picked. That's everything you just said. That's the spirit of rejection. That's mm -hmm. how the spirit of rejection talks to us. You're lonely. You're not good enough. Um, you know. And don't have no spots on it either. Yeah, you're, and that's, yeah, you're better than, that's, I don't know if that's pride or whatever, you know. Like, I don't have any spots, why didn't she pick me? <laughs> but that is pride. It is. It is pride. What's that? Too sick. Too sick? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like, you know, somebody that has, like, a disease that's... Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that 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 is a good example. Um, but we, we already listed sickness as a faith spot. So we're right. supposed to love ourselves. When rejection says you're too sick, you, you know, say that I know I love myself. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what I mean? Just be confident standing in God's word because we know that God accepts us with the sickness. Right. Um, that's not his will for us, but that's he does. He does accept and love us with the sickness, and we are. He commands us to love ourselves with That's the sickness, right. and to love other people with their sickness as well. Okay. When you feel like it's like Thank no you. End. You're welcome. When you feel like it's no end. You know, you just always constantly sick. Right. 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 Um, he still expects you to love yourself. You know, to love him, love yourself. Um, well, but it does get hard. You're absolutely right. And uh, we'll talk about with some tools to, to combat that. We'll, t we'll discuss that. Welcome back. Pastor Donna, we just watched a video about our faith spots, if you will, mm -hmm. and how the enemy likes to use those to accuse and reject us or mm -hmm. make us feel mm -hmm. accused and rejected. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain sure. what that means from your perspective? From my perspective, um, something that I, uh, I appreciated with uh, Pastor Henry brought out about rejection is that it makes you, rejection is so that we feel that we're unwanted, unloved, um, uh, kind of a throwaway, and um, that's part of what the enemy wants us to feel. But God is God is God. The Bible says that God is a God of love, and so God loves us. Um, he wants us to love ourselves and others, and so that is not rejection. And we have to be careful about about that. That's why we have to study what we were talking about before. We have to study God's word so that we know what God is saying about us and we have to say what God says about us right. and not what the enemy um, allows us to say. So, so many people have been rejected, um, even at, as, as, as an infant or little children. And a lot of things will help you, will make you feel rejected. But as we, as we study God's word, as we read God's word, we find out what God says about us and we want to say exactly what God says, that he says he loves us unconditionally All right so how do we combat okay so we read God's word mm -hmm. and learn what he says about us is there any other practical steps we can take to combat rejection, rejection? or accusation sure um, what I like to do is is be around others that that feel this that also know what God says about them and then say say be in, be intentional about saying what God says about you. If you have to write it down on paper, if you write it on a post-it note and stick it up on your refrigerator and in your mirror on your, in your bathroom, say what God says says about you and then build a relationship with God. See, what we don't do, we're not building a relationship with God, but build a relationship with him. He he loves you. So you you know, you want to love him. And and so what is that, you know, ask God, well what does that look like, God? He'll tell you. You know, he will tell you. A lot of people say, well, well, I don't know what God sounds like. You may not know what God sounds like, but 
as you read, read his word and sincerely talk to him, he will talk to you th even through his word. Sometimes he'll even have someone else be tell you something about, about his love for them. But love is the key. And re remember, rejection is sin and God is love. Right. And something else you said, which is key, is that there's three aspects to love. Yes. Uh, we receive God's love. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We love ourselves, mm -hmm. and then we love others in that order. In that order. So we can't love ourselves until we receive God's love. And, then we, and we can't love others if we don't love ourselves. Because what did Jesus say with the, the two greatest commandments? Loving God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. You have to understand how to love yourself. God will teach you. Right. He loves us enough to, he will teach you. Well, that's all the time we have today for the show. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Pastor Donna, for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Tanikia Polk. I am the host of Community Chat. I am also the author of Jesus Juice for Health and Freedom. If you'd like to know more about rejection and accusation and how to overcome it, uh, this is a great resource for you. We hope that you were educated and inspired today. God bless. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. This show was sponsored in part by Mannequin Sheets.